Ladies and gentlemen, well met! It is time for the Hearthstone World Championship Finals. I am DJ Wheat, joined by Seltzer. And we started with 12 players. We're down to the last two. And all I can say is BlizzCon 2014 has brought us some great games, some awesome players, and I can't believe we're already here at the finals. It's incredible to believe. I've been following uh, these players from the European Regional Qualifiers, the Americas Qualifiers, all over Asia, these players have shown up from everywhere in the world to come to BlizzCon and compete for this incredible prize pool. Over $250,000 rep for grabs. Yeah, a lot of money and a lot of fame and glory here in the Tavern of Champions. You guys have been so fantastic all weekend long. Have you been rooting for your favorite players? Are you excited for this finals? I think so, Marcus. I really love the energy and the excitement that we've got here at the Grand Finals uh, inside the Tavern of Champions. We have got two great players. They are both amazing people. They've got awesome stories, and both of them are incredibly entertaining. Absolutely. We have Titular Celestial from China. He's a professional board game player as well. Played over 500 board games. Yeah. His whole family plays games, and I think... Uh, He's got a special request for food, even if he wins. So we learned a lot about these players over the weekend, but Firebat is another incredible character. He is, uh, and I think we're going to have a good time here in this grand finals matchup. One more time, BlizzCon, are you ready for the Hearthstone World Championships? Let us introduce our first finalists. It's Tiddler! <laughs> and Tiddler's opponent, none other than Firebat! You guys, I feel honored to be here on stage with you, so thank you for entertaining us all weekend. Uh, simple question, Tiddler, what's it feel like to be uh, here at BlizzCon in front of all these people? Uh, thank you for all, all your support, and uh, I love you. They love you back. Firebat, anything you want to say to the people? Thanks for all the support, and everybody that plays Hearthstone is awesome. All right, Tiddler, I do have one other question. Uh, you have competed in many Hearthstone tournaments. This one of the biggest. Um, you have taken a few second places. This could be the tournament where you finally take first, yes? Yeah. Maybe it's the first time I can get the championship, so I will try my best. Thank you. And Firebat, when we first started this tournament circuit, you said your goal was to be recognized. You wanted to be invited. You wanted to be seen as one of the greatest Hearthstone players in the entire world. And if you win this event, there is no choice but to recognize you as such. Is that your goal? That's my goal. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, please help us usher these players into the playing area with a large round of applause. Go ahead, gentlemen. You guys have been awesome. It has been so much fun to hang out here in the Tavern of Champions. We have had players developers, Blizzard employees, all sorts of folks coming up and uh, enjoying us. And thank you for being here. But let's not leave out our narrators of this grand finals. 
Guys, we're finally here. All this time, all these qualifiers, all these games. Casters, are you as excited as this hall is? Absolutely, Wheat and Seltzer. Thank you so much for that great introduction. We could not be more excited for Firebat versus Tiddler. This is what it comes down to. One player is going home with the title as World Championship and 100,000 US dollars. You know, Artosis and Doa, they've talked a lot about Tiddler Celestia and how great of a player he is. And we've talked a lot about this weekend about how great of a player that Firebat is. I, this is, I couldn't think of a more appropriate finals from this also it's from two players from opposite sides right. of the world tiddler has come all the way from china and again as he said you know he's got some second place finishes wca won a ton of money there Firebat's just a just a city boy from south detroit and uh, he's come a lot of way and he ain't gonna stop believing there's a hundred thousand dollars to win here oh man I'm, I'm so excited this is the single most important match in the history of hearthstone we're going to crown the world champion after this that's right, and only one of them can do it. And unfortunately, it's been a long journey for both of them, but one player does have to lose, and one player will get all of the glory. Now, these two guys have gone through a lot. You know, Tiddler did have to go through both Tare and Kranich to get to these finals, both players who've been formidable, but Firebat also had his fair share of difficult opponents, uh, going through Kaur, going through D2, and almost being eliminated in a group stage where he had to get through second place in order to get here to the finals. Yep. Yeah, I, I certainly agree. It's an amazing way. He, he had to qualify for this tournament as well. So this was a long way for both of the players. But you know what? They are here. You, to become a world champion right now for both Tiddler and Firebat is to win only one more match. That's right. One, one best of five. One best of five. We're, it's still going to be best of five. One veto. Nothing has really changed whatsoever. But as much as it's tried and true, <laughs> everything feels fresh and and new, like Firebat's never been to a stage like this before. He says it was his dream, a dream come true for him. Uh, like you said, he's just a, a, a boy from Detroit trying to just make his way through Hearthstone. And at the same time, he's facing the crowd. He told me it was a very emotional moment for him. Uh, let's take a look at these players a little bit more for anybody who's just joining us for the first time and learning more about these Chinese players as well as these American players. Yeah, so Tiddler, you know, we saw him earlier. This guy loves board games, and he's a, a card game specialist, of course. He's coming to this, going to the grand finals. You know, it's what, part of what brings him together. And he talked a little bit er, uh, yesterday about how he loves television. They were calling him Supernatural <laughs> from there. Yeah, and, uh, that's right. a couple of questions. He said his favorite show is Prison Break. Yeah. And he identifies with Michael Schofield. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think it's just yeah. perfect spot on for you that. You think his family ever beats him in board games? Because uh, his whole family loves playing uh, with him. You know, maybe every once in a while. Of course, it's just it's, uh, it's right. RNG every time they beat him, I'm sure. That's true. You know, just like they, they have to play Monopoly in order to be competitive <laughs> against Tiddler, that's for sure. Well, on the other, on the other hand, we have Firebat, who is uh, one of the, of the best players in the world, one of the uh, best players from NA. He is consistently the top. Uh, he consistently gets the top um, places on the ladder. Just, uh, he qualified from, from just being one of the, the best players on the ladder from the uh, yep. uh, American server. So uh, I, this guy is super consistent. Everybody respects him. And he's here. Like, he, he grinded his way, uh, his way through all those players and just sitting in an inn and, uh, at the fireplace in this magical world. Firebat is a player who's meticulously tested all of his decks and matchups. That's for certain. Uh, every time I, I consult him about how he's doing in a tournament, he's he's like, well, here, take a look at my docs that I have, the spreadsheets that I have. <laughs> and it is crazy to see his plan preparation. He guesses players with a 90% plus accuracy on what they're going to do and what they're going to ban. That, yeah. That's what he told me. Yeah, based on their leads and what they're going to, what exactly. he anticipates they're going to lead with and what they're going to ban you can't, against. You can't confuse yeah. this guy. No, it's really, it's just, I mean, this guy is on point. He studies all of his opponents. And like you said, he's done a lot of his research and coming into this match right here. Uh, I, I already like that he's banned out Hunter because one of the most powerful decks he's got against it is that Zoo Warlock deck. It's going to put a ton of pressure on Hunter and look to end the game early. Uh, but Tiddler, he's taken out that Warlock straight away. He knows that Firebat has been crushing people all tournament with this deck, something he definitely does not want to face in such an important matchup as the ability to just lose control of the board and not be able to recover. Well, Zoo is such a powerful deck, so I, I, I totally agree with banning it. Also, Tiddler just uh, played in the WCA final where he lost to a zoo deck. So he respects the zoo um, as much. And, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't li like to lose uh, against the same deck again no, in the finals. That's not how you want to go out in the finals. Not anymore. Not in this grand finals where everything is on the line. Guys, really quick predictions. Nymph, she starts off first. 
Well, my prediction will be uh, Tiddler because he has uh, already, ex he is an experienced player in ter playing in those big tournaments. He played IM Shenzhen, he played WCA, so he has a lot of offline experiences. He played many, many games before. Uh, Firebat, uh, also an experienced player, but not as experienced as an offline one. I've been saying it since the first day I ever played with Firebat. I thought he was one of the best in the world. The amount of research he does, the amount of practice he puts in, and just the kind of mind he's got for the game. I've followed him the entire way through this. You know, he was second seed in NA, or the Americas coming into this. He dominated stage two of BlizzCon. He's dominated this tournament all the way to the Grand Finals. I gotta go with my boy Firebat. I'm gonna take Firebat as well. I think it also means a lot. He's playing on homeland soil as the American representative here in California. So. Here we go, two votes against one. Let's see what happens. Game number one is about to begin at the grand finals of the Hearthstone World Championship. Let's get it on. All right. BlizzCon. Druid versus Druid to begin things off. We're going to start with a very safe approach. It's decent against everything. And people say that Druid's well-equipped, but it's not favored against many things. It's it's okay and, and decent against pretty much the entire field. Yeah, I feel like the matchups, when you bring Druid to a tournament, the matchups you expect to face, Druid is going to have a lot of close matchups in those. You know, when it's behind, you know, it's looking like the 45% range. When it's ahead, it's looking at about the 55% range. So, sure. you know, nothing crazy. You're just you're looking to use this to try to get a lead on your opponent. It's a really safe choice to do so because, frankly, there aren't just a lot of counters out there that, that shut down Druid right from the get-go. And um, Diddler gets uh, Wild Grove, which is a super important card. This matchup you want to have to be able to play the cards uh, faster. Druid also doesn't oh. have that many common oh. mechanics. Firebat against the Wargrove as it, well. This is a mirror match, right? Uh, they're very similar decks. You saw Firebat has a he's Fury Protector in there. It's going to use that in combination with cards like Spectral Light to really help put a lot of leverage on uh, his opponent's ability to pick through his board. Hunter specifically with Kill Command and Hunter's Mark. And of course you see Tiddler. He's running uh, Haunted Creeper in this instead. So a little bit of a difference coming in. Well, getting that wild growth is important, but both players have wild growth to curve into something very nicely, so all's well that ends well. We're not going to have a blowout, at least by the mana curve tempo. Oh, yeah, certainly. Uh, both players also have a Yeti. So right now it will be very important who will get the lead, because Druid has trouble coming from behind. You don't have that many comeback mechanisms. You have the combo. Uh, this is a very tricky matchup, by the way. Like, you have to focus on trading more. You can't go for phase. Uh, you need to get an edge, whatever you can. Look at that swipe. That swipe's a really important draw right now. <laughs> yeah, right, both of them have swipe. Both of them have big game yeah. under and wild goes and chill with Yay to start things <laughs> off. Uh, I guess they're evenly matched, yeah. right? And I love it because sometimes this matchup can be uh, really lopsided if one player gets a wild growth and, uh, and the second one misses it. A second wild growth. Right. I have no this Sylvanas can be very problematic. She That's has high sure. impact. She doesn't mess around. He needs a keeper of the growth. No, it doesn't have a silence. And this is presenting a problem already for Firebat. The board means a lot in this matchup. So what do you do if you can't deal with Sylvanas? Do you just ignore Sylvanas and go for face? Like, this is one of the strategies that the players can apply. But maybe there is something better. Yeah, if you take a look, I mean, he does have 12 points of damage if he chooses to charge this Druid, and that really sends a, lot, a big statement to your opponent. P something that you're worried about, of course, is whether or not this Sylvanas is going to die next turn. If your opponent doesn't have a Wrath or a way to, like, give your opponent Minions, one power. This yep. Sylvanas is going to stay on the board for another turn. So even through something like that, it, he would be able to take out a couple of his opponent's minions. But, you know, when you're sitting at 14, you're thinking about combo. You know, all those sorts of things can really influence you. So Firebat's got to think about how his opponent's going to respond to a scenario like this. Is this going to be too much charge damage? Is, is, it, is it not worth enough to be putting this kind of pressure on? It, can he turtle up? Is there a possibility he can kind of trade down this board? All uh, of these things are going to be thinking about. And I, uh, I don't blame him. He or this would, you, would you just like... Uh, Charge with the Druid of the Claw and deal 12 points of damage. Oh, hold on, he can't do that. He's gonna fish for a card. If he picks up a Keeper, maybe that can answer it. Have a drawer. Uh, uh, I think this damage might be headed straight to the dome. He doesn't pick up a trade at all? Uh, but not, I think when you get Savage Roar, you can afford to, to kind of kind of damage some more. I could be wrong. We'll see what happens. Oh, and he's gonna go he for it. A to the face. That really wow. sending a statement to Tiddler. So Tiddler right now, he's very aware that his opponent is all is trying to be on the aggression, and he he's he's gonna piece together a way to start picking apart this board and make sure that a Savage War isn't gonna blow him out of the game. What's very important in this, in this matchup also is that you are not running many taunts. 
we are seeing this rid of the claw, but other than that, uh, mostly players are not getting uh, Defender Vargas or, or Sentry Protector. So if you go for face, it's really hard to, uh, you know, protect yourself and heal yourself. And even with Ancient Floor, you want to draw the cards to be able to get the combo faster instead of just healing. Right. So Tiddler, when he lines up this play, it looks like he wants to use Swipe to clear. Try to, as best as he can, control the state of damage, but he did take a lot. Yeah. I, although it is nice that he has Sylvana still alive. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't, I absolutely like the way he's played this hand too, but, you know, combinations of Firebat too, he recognized that his opponent was going to have to put the pressure on his minions instead of on his own board, so he gets to hero power the Sylvanas down. Right. So the value that it gets straight away was was just damage value, and it wasn't too much to your face. Not so bad. now he's got the, uh, yeah, so now he's got the option of whether he wants to play this low or charge, and I think he's going to play this low Thimber right here, because if you look at next turn, when he charges that Druid of the Claw, he's got Savage Orb, that's 15 points of damage coming across the board, so he choose to take that. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. He also is playing Sunscreen Protector. It, it will be important in this matchup because you can't protect yourself and just continue going for face. Wipe not available. Wrath's not available. This turn looking really rough for Tiddler. Dude, just yeah, Harrison Jones. Jones is not that useful in this matchup. It would be against weapon That's classes like Firebat's Grove, but if he loses it, then there's no point in him at the point. He just oh uses God. a 5-4 body as the best he can do to contest the board. But now, the play is right back on Firebat now, because he's in Almost the exact same situation he was with the Sylvanas. Does he want to take out the Saracen Jones? Okay. That Shade of Next Realm is really going to change this dynamic. That's so pretty nice. Almost certainly going to be using uh, Swipe this turn. So he's going to take out this Haunted Creeper, make sure no Savage Roar shenanigans can happen. The Swipe's going to clean things up, and now he's positioned himself wow. for lethal. This is bad Next news turn, for Tiddler. Tiddler's going to need to, I imagine the Swipe's going to be coming out, but I don't know if that's going to be enough. Yeah, this is so tough for Tiddler. He needs to clear the board and just uh, develop the board on his side to be able to sneak in some damage next turn. But there is the Savage Rift, there is Dread of the Claw for Firebat. So whatever happens, he has an edge right now. Savage Roar is, what, 13? Yeah, 13, yeah, he's got 13 right now. Oh, another Druid of the Claw. This is so much damage coming from Firebat. Do you use Savage Roar, though, this turn? Or do you just, you know, continue doing I, some damage? I, I think it's definitely worth the wait because, you know, something that he is going to be thinking about, though, is... If his opponent's got combo, he's got more than enough damage to kill him at this point. So Force of Nature, Savage Roar, that's 14 damage by itself. There's three charge tokens, then Savage Roar, plus two to everything that you control on your side of the board. That big game hunter is four more power than he needs. That could put lethal back on Firebat. So he's thinking about combo being in his opponent's hand right now. This is a, a possibility. I would, it wouldn't surprise me to see either one of these guys go into taunt or to see the Shady Next Ramos trade away. You can also like charge the cat, um, deal, mm. the, deal four points of damage, and then taunt the cat. So we have a four-four taunt. Then yeah, combo I, doesn't kill you. I think that's great. I think either way, Firebat wants to start finding ways to get that damage. Until you draw that force of nature to put out those bodies, but that Where Savage Roar gives that 14 points of burst. You're just looking at you, Savage Roar with two of the claw to put in the finishing points. And don't forget, that Shade of Next Ramus is going to grow next turn. So his Tither Celestial is going to have to have a big onus to clear this board as best as he can. Can he do this? Wow. With Wild Grove and Wrath. Checking his, uh, checking his stream the claw. There's Savage Roar, but no force of nature in hand. Can, there, can he fish for another card to save him here? Or does he have to use it to remove? I think he got to use his removal. But I don't, I don't think this is enough, though. Right, because the Jew of the Claw charge is still going to be a Savage damage. Roar for removal. Oh my gosh. Four, oh my god, this is five, five, That's oh. yes, 13 because points of damage. It. That's gonna do it for game number one. Firebat has a lot of damage. Now all he has to do is piece it together. It's tough not to piece this one together. This is this is a one plus one equals three of Ozmath right here. Charge this through to the claw. Savage Roar, I believe this is 13 points of damage. This Guys. is over. Firebat is getting the elite one game for Firebat. First blood, Firebat. Oh, the oh, man, that killer. was an intense game. Back and forth. Punches everywhere, and Firebat is going to have a lead. Really showing a oh, lot man. about what this Druid match is about. As you said, Nimch, it's tough for Druids to recover once they get behind. So that both these players try and take initiative. Both of them had great starts, too, coming out with Wild Growth, Chill, and Yeti, scaling into the mid game. The difference is the fact that Firebat is going first in this, so he gets an extra turn to start attacking. Right. So when he's the player that starts attacking first, his opponent's going to have to respond because if he chooses to trade, Firebat's going to be the first one with an opportunity to use Savage Roar and really clear that game up. And then, of course, the great recognition, understanding that Sylvanas having to trade back instead of having to deal with the Sylvanas, a lot of damage got pushed through there that I'm not sure that I would have made the exact same plays. Well, that Firebat is sitting there, and he's a possible world champion in a couple of games.
So what is what is Siddler going to, to do? He has Priest and Warlock left. What's the best deck to counter the Druid? Well, uh, the Handlock deck presents a lot of threats for Druid to respond immediately. In fact, Druid has to fight with their removal. They don't have cards that instantly says kill this minion or destroy this minion. They have cards that says do damage. So if you have like those big giants or even the Twilight Drakes, you don't have a silence for it. It has 10 health. How do you remove that efficiently if you're a Druid player without committing two, maybe even three cards? It's really difficult. So oftentimes, the Handlock player draws cards easy with their hero power and they're putting out big threats and Druid has to either find a way to kill them before they die, or they have to line up the removal perfectly with cards like Big Game Hunter and the Science of Twilight. I certainly agree. I think Handlock is a good matchup against the Druid, uh, where Priest is it, it, a bit tricky. Like, the, a Druid has a lot of fire attack minions, especially a Spectral Knight, which uh, can't be targeted. So if you take a Priest, you're going to have a bad time. Handlock, take a good pick. Yeah, I, I gotta agree with you. I think Handlock is uh, very similar in terms of its mid-range presence. You know, Mountain Giant is just a it's a lot bigger than a chill one yet he is. Kind of both these guys are playing on curve. So if you don't see a wild growth in your opening hand, you're, you're playing on even ground with your opponent, and they just have bigger minions than you at that point. The edge has to go to the Warlock. You know, at the same time, I've also seen some people, they, they don't mind Priest versus Druid that much. Even though you would feel like conventional trains of thought, maybe like, I don't feel like I can actually compete with the speed of Druid, but who knows? It really is choice up to their Celestial. Game number two is about to begin, and this is crucial, because if you go down 0-2, how on earth are you going to have to win three games in a row against Firebat when he still has plenty of gas where it came from, because he's got his own Hunter, and he has that Miracle Rogue deck. If you do, you do deserve to be the world champion. All right, game number two is about to begin. What's going to happen? What will Tither Celestial choose? It has to be the right answer, because Firebat is looking for the win. I'm so excited, by the way, to see how Firebat is going to play this thread. It's a fantastic deck. It's, a, it's really honest. Like, you play those big minions, Yetis, use the Savage for I mean, a post-match combo. Druids pr think they're honest, and I know Admirable definitely would agree <laughs> usually with that, but there is a card called Innervate and Wild Growth, which can be a little oh, dishonest. Oh, those cards are totally fair. You know, actually, Tiddler's going to kill victory. Priest here, and I think part of what influenced the decision is the fact that he saw a big game Hunter. In that uh, in that druid deck, I wonder if that's worrying him a little bit. Something he like he doesn't want to play a giant and get blown out by a big game hunter. You know, a little bit of early pressure, then follow that up. That's something that can present that a pretty right. big problem. It, it could be. Although I, I do know some handlock players feel like you know what, even if they're big game hunters, there's still three other giants, and the fact that I have Taraxxus, it, it's still difficult for druid to deal with it. Oh wow, uh, Firebot has the coin. He doesn't have the wild growth uh, or innovate yet, but Tiddler, he has the Okanai Soul Priest and the Circle of Healing combo. Well, nothing screams value like a turn one chewing Yeti My and being gosh. able to attack your opponent. Wow. Oh, wow. And a, another chewing Yeti. This is looking devastating. How can you turn this down? And chewing oh, Yeti is resistant look at this. to the Alkanai Soul Priest circle feeling combo leading four damage to the board. You know, picking up that second chewing Yeti, it has a little bit of potential to change his play right here because oh. he'll, have, he'll have a turn two chewing Yeti. A turn, and I know, it's disappointing. He'll have a turn two chill and Yeti, a turn three shades extra almost, and then a turn four chill and Yeti. So he's playing a lot heavier on curve when he does it this way. Oh, wow. He has a wide grab, so he's the uh, yeah. line of play can change again. Yeah, I, I almost certainly, he's got, I think he's got to go over the chill and Yeti at this point. Yeah. And turn three chill and Yeti as well? Yeah, he could play turn three chill and Yeti, or he could play turn three shades extra almost. Is that the best start ever? It's, it's, it's one of the best because priests can't deal with these four tag creatures with high health very easily. They get bullied because they don't have removal spells to line up for it. Yep. You're seeing that right here straight away. Tiller just has to play this just to try to deal three damage with it. And that four attack minion for Firebat. But uh, you know what? Tiddler, uh, he has Okanai Soul Priest combo. He has Savannah's. He has his Holy Smite as well. So there are some ways to deal with this board. Uh, also, a 3 4 Dal Cultus represents some damage, so maybe a Firebat will have to trade into it. Well, generally speaking, you don't want that Dark Cultist Death Rout to activate. If it gives a health buff to minions, it makes the Priest board extremely resilient. So Firebat takes a commanding lead on board. This is so difficult to bounce back from. You know, if there's, if there's a kind of hand that could do it, though, of course, it's Auk and I have Soul Priest. Right. Circle of Healing, which turns into Circle of Dealing. I mean, yeah. even <laughs> so. Or Circle of Death. Even Sport so, everything. 
This is a tough turn, too. I mean, you're not killing a chill one. You're committing two cars to kill off oh one. God, this looks like a priest turn to me. I think you can police smite the, the Yeti and pass. That's, you know what? That's uh, actually not too bad. That's that, super awkward, you know, but this is what, what you might have to that do. That really gives up to, a lot to your opponent, though, if you Whoa. choose to make a play like that. Look at this. It's a priest turn. Turn four pass. Oh, four my pass. gosh. No, emote, no heal. Tiddler, Tiddler is completely passing back. And you know what? Firebat used an Innervate to gain Temple early on. How far is he ahead of he in terms of mana usage? Firebat seemed a bit confused. Oh, yeah. Look at that, and he's gonna be patient. He knows that that Arcanai circles in hand. With, the, with that play, he could have played that, that Shade next round. But, you know, another thing he plays around too is Holy Nova, because that Shade isn't gonna be buffed straight away. So Holy Nova cleared out two of his minions. He's, this is sort of well, like a, a blessing and a curse nice. <laughs> for him. It's like he have to, it plays out so well for him because he happens to play around uh, this play that much more. So this is three there. cards to kill two, which he already lost his Dark Cultist. Firebat is pretty happy to see that probably. Well, but still, the Yeti was innervated and, uh, and every Yeti was coined, so it was it's even more cards. Uh, Diddler is able to deal with this two important for the minions and get yeah. back to the game. Sylvanas. Sylvanas is going to do some work here. Think. Yeah, I'd say yeah. so. The is a fantastic so. card to regain board presence. Re yeah, exactly. Really giving him a lot of board presence. I have no time for games. Yeah, a lot of pressure now back on Fireback. I think that Ninja Blade Master isn't. Oh, oh and he draws oh, no. the oh. Silence the best answer to Vanas the Druid has. Yeah, you you silence and deal with it immediately, right? There's no way you're, lead, you're letting Sylvanas do her own devices here. It's, it's just too dangerous. She can take so many things to Shadow or Death, provide such a problem because he can steal even the shit next round. Yeah, I think part of it too is he just kind of he kind of wants to get out of his hand before his opponent has an opportunity to really get a lot of value from it. Like say he chooses to taunt up Druid the Claw or something here, uh, that gives the opponent a really good turn uh, with everything that's different. Because just even a Holy Dove at that point, devastating play. You just really don't want Sylvanas. You don't want to have to be pressured to play your Keeper of the Grove. You kind of want to get it out of your hand now and uh, make sure that you don't have to play it on your opponent's turn. So rather than... Guys, but look at this. It seems like uh, Fireball was winning the game with double Yeti. But right now, Tiddler is, is back and he is rocking this. And this Injured Blade Master is pretty good to have it. And you're fighting survive. on your side because Druid, again, has a hard time dealing with high health minions. A 4 7. How do you deal with a 4 7? Well, Karen is a fantastic yeah, so well, Karen is, is a pretty good way to start that. It's a, it's, it's a tough one for the priest to have to chew through. Firebat, he's looking for Savage Roar right now. You take a look, he's got Force of Nature in his hand. And that shade's going to keep growing. If it gets big enough, just Force of Nature Savage Roar with that shade out is going to be enough for lethal. How can you're right. You're right, because the closer he gets the grows, remember, he's going to add the two damage. Right now, if he just had combo and the mana to do it, it'd be 21 damage. And that's just going to keep growing every turn from this right. point on. Right, it's, it's just a dangerous situation. It seems like this, this game is about training minions, but Firebat is having his finger on a trigger, and he can fire. If he gets a Savage Roar, he's just, um, yeah. he can sweep the game right there. Well, he's protecting his other minion that he just played as soon as possible. Karen is also another sticky minion on the board. As soon as he dies, he summons another four or five minions, so he still had the threat of comboing. And four attacks, so oh, Shadow or Death is not doing anything with this Karen or even um, the Shade of Hasramas. But there is hesitation. Yeah, I, I mean, this is a tougher decision. There's a lot of merit to both of these plays, Trash both waiting and trading away, because, you know, as you said, it's tough. This can't be Shadow or Death. You've got to hit a power five or greater. So this Karen really likely to stick to the board right now. No silence until yeah. the Celestial's hand. He doesn't even have a direct way to kill it, so this is likely to get in. Oh, you know, four Spectre Knight. Damage. No, uh, Spectre Knight also is a little problematic, because as the Priest player, normally you try to use your hero power to keep your mains as, as alive as long <laughs> as possible, but you can't even heal your men here. Yeah, four, six bodies still pretty good. Look, like, sure. just has to straight away start. He won't be able to use effective, <laughs> spell effective. Right. Shadow War Death oh, yeah. for eight points of mana. And well, how do you deal with Karen? That spends pretty much his entire turn. If he does that, he will die. What Tiddler needs is to shut down his opponent's ability to play the combo and find a way to survive. Tiddler Otherwise, he is done. Tiddler needed to taunt that turn. I, I don't think I don't think he's no way to, to survive this turn anymore. Force Nature Savage War is going to do it. Firebat's oh going to take a 2-0 lead in the finals against Tiddler Celestial with the Force of Nature Savage Roar combo. The power of the Druids. This is exactly 
what Tiddler didn't want to see. My goodness. Oh, the oh. Shreds just charging. Power of the Forest. A 2 0 lead for Firebat. And with a 2 0 lead, you have to peg him at the heavy favorite. And you know what? A little bit of flair and ending it. I like it. Wow. Unbelievable. He is one game away from being the Hearthstone World Champion and earning $100,000. That was an unbelievable game. You know, just, I think both of these players really played this game fantastic, but this was a prime example of just how powerful Druid can be when it's got an advantageous matchup. It really put maximum pressure on. It started out with an early Chill Yeti. Tiddler was forced to play a Dark Cultist just to try to stifle his opponent's early yep. game from snowballing completely out of control. He had to basically sacrifice his Dark Cultist for that. And then you saw Firebat being really patient with the Wild Growth turn making sure he didn't overextend into a Holy Nova or the Alcanai Soul Priest combo, which is what Tiddler had, and I think that was really the key turn for the game. But this is not over yet. Tiddler is down to his headlock deck, and he won a couple of series with a 3-0 sweep. Uh, we've seen that before. He's an expert headlock player, very patient. He knows how to play the deck. He knows his matchups. If if I would pick one deck, if I would have to pick one deck that Tiddler can, can use to 3-0 Firebat right here, I would, I would say yeah. his handlock. His handlock play, he even used in semifinals to 3-0 his opponent, and he played pretty well there. So I feel like it's not over by any means. Taylor still has a shot, but it's going to be tough because Firebat still has the Hunter waiting in reserve. That deck can give the handlock, honestly, a, a big handful of pressure that you can't deal with. Yeah, you know, I think he, he decided to anchor handlock here again, Nimsh, as you were saying because it's such a big comfort pick for him. He's so good at playing Warlock Glass. Not only that, but this is one of his specialties, that he, he just didn't want it to be eliminated and be left on a priest deck, something perhaps he's a little bit more unfamiliar with, because I think Warlock certainly would have been a better matchup against the Druid there, but he chose to go with the Priest, and that's showing some of the mindset that these players have. More comfortable picks for them mean a lot more. They're, when they're in those options, they've, they've seen these scenarios before, they've done it thousands of times. That's the place you want to be at. You don't want to be going in with unfamiliar matchups, especially not in something as important as this match right here. Oh yeah, the comfort zone is really important and you want to go with your preference. And uh, you know, losing handlock randomly to, to a Druid deck is something that you definitely do, uh, want, don't want to see. Right now he's down to his handlock and he knows that this is his, his last deck, his last chance of becoming the world champion. Oh man. It's his last life, not his last chance for sure. He's still got three games that he has to do it. Firebat is up 2-0. Will he go for the sweep? Will we crown our first Hearthstone World Champion right after this game? Let's find out as we go in to Handlock versus Druid. Horde versus Alliance. <laughs> That's cool, Dan versus that is, that is right. That is right, Nimsh. And we'll find it. out who, once again, will get the better of each other. Now, this Druid deck still has an opportunity, a small window, if you will to kill off that handlock if they get the Savage Work combo and there's no taunts. But ever since Max Rampus came out, it feels like handlock is a boom is consistent a lot with cards such as Sludge Belcher. Oh my god, Firebot has the Wide Grove. This is one of the most important cards because if you start playing cards earlier against the handlock, you won't be able to respond. You play something, they want to Siphon Soul, but they find themselves that it's a turn four, they, they can't afford it. They, 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 does have, like, they don't have enough mana. That's, Keeper of the Grove. That's also another really important card in this matchup is Keeper of the Grove. This Twilight Drake, it gets all of its health from a buff that it Job gives to done. itself. So if you silence that off, that's a one health Keeper of the Grove you're looking at. I'm sorry, the one health Twilight Drake you're looking at. And then you couple that with something like Wild Growth, that's going to allow him oftentimes to be able to just hero power it down instead of having to worry about trading off his Keeper of the Grove for it. But still, uh, right now, uh, Hitler has a decent Job hand with uh, Mountain Giant. And uh, a Molten and Farseer as well, he will be able to develop the board as Twilight Drake. Do you think Twilight Drake is a good card right now? Uh, Twilight Drake is, is still a decent value card. Even if he silences, like you mentioned, he had to deal with the 4 attack minion. But when you have something to play preemptively, then it becomes a lot better. Because you're trading against a really high health minion. That said... What do you feel like is the better course of action? He does have uh, the Mountain Giant coming up in the next couple turns as well. Do you like playing the Giant? Do you like playing the Drakes? Yeah, this is going to be a really couple key turns, I think, for Tiddler here, because he has seen Big Game Hunter from this deck already. So something that's coming into his mind is, does he want to play this Mountain Giant and risk getting Big Game Hunter, or does he want to start going for the Twilight Drake straight away? He also has uh, two Twilight right, Drakes, which means he can coin out one and then play at the next turn. 
but we do know that there's a perfect response twice in a row from Firebat. Right, we, that, that tw second Twilight Drake may actually end up costing him a lot in this sort of a reversal of fortune here. He's got two keepers in the grove, so both of them are going to get taken out straight away. Sorry about that. Oh, 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 I cry every good time. Good old American manners. I got this. By being fiddler here, you don't expect a second keeper of the grove, so you oh. do follow up with the Twilight Drake. That was your original plan. For sure you are disappointed that it was a keeper. Oh man, oh, I have more wow. bad news for Tinder. There's more where that came oh, from. Oh my gosh. And Firebat has lined up the scientist perfectly. Oh. And he can use his hero power and not even trade away his minion. Oh, oh, oh sure. Firebat, he's squinting like, oh god, this is I, I feel bad for this guy. Well, he'll feel really bad if he picks with the big game hunter to follow up on this mountain giant too. Yeah. <laughs> I know that would feel in a Tiddler seat. Not a good one. Sludge Belcher, though, starting to put together some gas. And there's the mountain giant. Is it going to be the big game hunter? Uh, I oh. feel like it was <laughs> unfair. It's like, all right, who's, who's giving Firebat these cards? <laughs> all right, so what do you do now? Well, you know, Karen can come out, but the Iron Beak Owl, of course, is going to be in Firebat's mind. So a couple more decisions. He's got multiple ways to develop the board. And it's just about what he wants to play around at this point. Hmm. Do you want to kill the giant? Or do you just want to develop the board? I think you want to kill the giant, but I'm not sure it's actually your best course of action at this moment. Simply because there's so many different ways to, to approach this game. Like you may be able to just out trade your opponent at this at this stage. So it's, it's all those things, of course, gonna be in his mind. He just dismantled double Twilight Drake. If you kill this giant, then Warlock might not have the, you know many more cards to, right. to, to pressure you. The low theb, it's it's kind of presenting a fork in the road here for Tiddler now. Is Tiddler thinking his opponent's going to go for lethal? Like, maybe he's got a Savage Roar and a Swipe in his hand, something like that. He's not going to be able to use, like, Hellfire, Shadow Flame, any of those cards. Yeah, so he feels pressure to counterattack right here. So Firebat is getting in a couple points of free damage there. This Swipe will be amazing. Oh, he's got a Wrath, too. Wow, he can actually Wrath the Mountain Giant. Yeah, and, you know, because he, he was afraid to play Karen, and that Shadow Flame would have cleared the entire board. Now he can actually safely drop that down. Well, a lot more safely drop it down. Uh, before his opponent has to use a lot of his resources in order to get rid of it. Hmm. And getting these minions to stick on the board is what's really key for this druid because as soon as he picks up Savage Roar, that's going to be the key moment where he can flip the switch and find a way to end the game. Yeah, so I imagine this means there's going to be no attack here from Firebat. Yeah, there is no need to attack. Yeah, so just above the board. Gosh, this, is this going to be Ancient Watcher Shadow Flame? That looks like a real good play to me, but. Needs an Iron Big Owl to take out that 4 5. Axis is uh, pretty, can be pretty powerful. Nice. Not to do. Well, the only thing is that he does put you at 15 health, and the combo is always within range of potentially threatening you. You still have this this up, which is a very powerful card. Uh, double taunt will protect you for some point uh, for some time. Uh, and we've seen Tiddler so still really patient. He has a lot of options. He might want to get a bit lower to be able to play this multi giant. He still has the bar series, so he has everything in his hand. As long as he does as he does die uh, to the combo, he has. The heals, removal, taunts, uh, and even drags. Uh, He's softening up everything here too, so it's a juicy hellfire in a couple turns. That's, this could be really brutal. I mean, Shadow Flame and Hellfire yeah. both are threatening. There's a really good moment. chance that Fireback actually loses his entire board if he goes for this chill one yeti here. Yeah, I mean, and it's also like something to say, like, how long do you want to hold on to Shade? But at the same time, the AoE from Anlock is so powerful. You don't want to bite off more than you can chew and overextend here. Yep. So still, still very likely to lose his whole board here. I think this looks like a really good Shadow Flame turn. He can attack this Cairn, still have a 5-1 left, and Shadow Flame is going to This is one of those big swing turns that Handlock uses to try to get control of this matchup. And one of the reasons why Druid has such a poor time against it is because Druid needs right. it scaling and wow. then to back that up. That but Shadow dead. Flame just cleared the board. Yeah, he's just been swept out now. So Tiddler having a massive control of this game, healing back up a little bit, and a ton of cards in his hand. Fireback can rebuild, but he doesn't. He still doesn't have anything to follow it up. Maybe oh. I spoke too soon because he picks up a Savage Roar now. The first part of the combo. He needs Force of Nature, but yeah. still. This Druid deck doesn't seem to have much card draw other than having the ability to cycle the draft oh. and the Ancient Lords. But I also saw the Azure Drake, right? So Fireback does have ways to dig deeper into his deck, which is going to be important. Because uh, very soon, there's going to be a point where Handlock will just be drawing a lot of cards. He can't push through the walls, and he's going to be struggling yeah. in order to get that damage. This is how yeah, Handlock sure. can easily clear the board again. Once and more, healing back up. 
and you can just establish a tunnel. You don't even need the tunnel, you can heal yourself. 90 points of health, but super secure. Um, no threat of a combo. Combo is uh, 40 damage well, all. That's what you think until he has Innervate for a second Innervate. Savage, Savage War off the combo. It is a possibility. But you can't play around everything. No, you cannot. Another tough turn from Firebat here. How much value is there in using a taunt versus using hmm. a charge and then... Yeah, the, the problem is there are a lot of easy ways to just lose this Druid the Claw if you're playing it defensively. The Handlock player we see does have Sight Pistol, and that just easily deals with the Druid the Claw, and then he starts Where just push back on you. What about running a 4-4 into a 3 And then you just get destroyed by Mortal Coil. It's like, it's like, whatever you do, you pick your poison. He's gonna go with the taunts here. This is gonna prevent Molten Giant from getting played. Oh, Sylvanas gets picked up. Wow, wow you can taunting that Sylvanas. Sylvanas taunts. Yeah, and both the silences are already gone. The Firebat right. deck, both Keeper of the Groves have been. Fiddler Celestial is, is getting an advantage here. It, it seems like Firebat ran out of steam. Even though he has Savage and a, and a Swipe, no that, that's potentially a lot of damage. Yep. Fiddler is just building a wall. That's gonna be really difficult to chew through. And even if he does go pick up uh, Force of Nature, oh, this is one of those cards ends again. up getting stolen. Ancient of Lore is excellent, though. We're talking about how this Druid deck doesn't often have many ways to draw, but that is one of the primary ones. Yeah. This board is so much tension is building on this board, too. Look at how much power is being built. And I don't think uh, I don't think that Firebat's willing to attack this turn. Do you even play this Ancient of Lore? Well, the alternative is to set up a, a removal so that way you can easily transfer over like a, a weak pair and then just be able to remove it. What about uh, attacking Sylvanas uh, with those uh, four sixes and then killing Sylvanas with a shapeshift and after that when Sylvanas triggers and steals one of the, the taunts, maybe swipe and then edge the floor next turn? I certainly think that's what he's thinking about is ways to set up swipe turns. Yeah, this is a very good turn. Uh, okay, apparently he's thinking about something way different, so... <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, he's just gonna use yeah. this to completely trade off. He's okay with either outcome, essentially. And he still gets the Ancient of Lore down. Pretty clever play, actually. He, he effectively leaves a lot weaker minions on the board, still has one of his creatures. And he takes two guards deeper. I it's, it's, a, it's a good yeah, play. That was, like a really, that was a really solid line of play. You know, part of the, that was critical, too, was Sylvanas actually taking the one health through to the Claw instead of the two health through to the Claw. Right. That really could have changed. Well, no, he had sa he Savage Ward. Never mind. Well, it it's because of the Mortal Coil. Yeah, Honestly, yeah. that was That's a fantastic play. He was able to develop the board and get rid of, uh, of Sylvanas at the same time. Okay. Yeah, I think, yeah, think Siphon Souls. Right here. Still no Molten Giant able to be played though. And so I think Tid Tiddler's a little bit reluctant, I think, to play Jaraxxus before he gets uh, this Molten Giant on the board. So uh, I would. He does have Shadow Flame, which can deal with the Special Knights if he has a creature to go along with it. But until then, these are untargetable and a little bit hard to deal with. Double swipe. This is potentially 60 points of damage. Did right. you just play a 10 mana Molten Giant? You can. Well, he did use Savage Roar, right? So you feel like he has one less possibility of hitting to the combo. I think you go for a safe boat for now. And uh, Firebat, he only has 16 points of health. Of course. But there's a little That's bit of true. risk associated with this play, but I think it's fine. Your opponent's only got two cards in the hands. The likelihood of Black oh, Knight man. wasn't very much, but That's Firebat picks it up. That is a big draw. Wow. Wow, that is a huge draw right now. But do you do you attack and enable a Molten Giant and a clear? Or do you just trade? I think you just trade those minions. And yeah, you don't you don't want to invoke the wrath of Molten Giants and lose your board pretty easily, right? So I mean it's at the same time he does have direct damage to follow it up, right? He has two right. swipes that can hit the opponent right. He's straight and, and their their health. Yeah, up. I agree with Nimsh on this one. I think I'm I'm totally content just taking out these minions and kind of going forward from there, because with two swipes in your hand, this is 20 points of damage that you have sitting on the board, so if your opponent doesn't take something out, the, the lethal's a little bit more hidden. Of course, your opponent's gonna be thinking about Force Nature, which is six points of damage. They're gonna think about Savage Roar, which in this position is eight, but they right. may not be thinking about double swipe. That, that's one that I think a lot of players often forget about, is, is that sort of potential. It's also interesting that he can attack with Shapeshift, uh, 70 points of health, it's not good for the Warlock. He won't be able to play Molten Giant and the Vargas, so oh, you can wow. see exactly uh, right now 
So what do you do being Fiddler? It seems like suddenly you're in a, in a weird position. Yeah, his best chance to survive is Bolt Giant with Proctor. Down to 15. So he can play one of those Molten Giants and oh turn it up. Gosh, big game Hunter. I think is the big best game draw Hunter would be Savage Roar, Force of Nature. I think all of those cards are looking mighty good right now. There's oh! Savage Roar! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh. He's gonna do it. I yes. wait, wait, that's enough, enough, right? Is it enough? He has the hero power damage with the swipe. And that well, should be able to clear fire back. Oh will be your Hearthstone world champion. He doesn't wait. He didn't even need the Savage Roar. <laughs> oh, my oh my gosh. Fire Man is the 2014 Hearthstone world champion. GG. Incredible. The American coming all the way from Detroit on Homeland soil will take home 100,000 US dollars and for one whole year will call himself the best. Three hour with a dread. Wow. Fantastic play. I just, I, I'm speechless right now. I, I can't even, that, the feeling of being a world champion, unparalleled. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2014 world champion, Firebat. What a wonderful moment to be part of. As a young boy, Detroit as his dreams come true right before his very eyes. He watched esports as he was growing up. He watched StarCraft. He watched all these great Blizzard games. And now he gets to partake in it. What an emotional moment to capture. I just want to hug this guy right now and congratulate him on his win. It's just amazing. Amazing final. Amazing winner. And with that, we want a quick word with the winner. Wheaton Rachel is with the winner. Firebat. Ladies and gentlemen, Firebats! And here to present the Hearthstone Trophy for the Hearthstone World Championships, Mike Morheim, President, CEO, and co-founder here at Blizzard. Mike. Congratulations to Firebat and to all of our Hearthstone contestants this year. Um, you guys have been an amazing esports audience, so excellent job cheering on your favorite pro players, and um, thank you for supporting Hearthstone. And thank you, Blizzard, for this incredible game. Firebat, you are our world champion. You have won $100,000. You are the greatest Hearthstone player in the world. How do you feel? I, I feel absolutely amazing. <laughs> Couldn't feel better. You won this tournament in an incredible way. You had several 3-0 victories. You are a dominant player. What do you think this means for your future as a professional gamer? Hopefully I actually get invited to stuff. <laughs> I think you'll be getting those invitations in the mail now. And I want to ask, your parents, they have to believe in you now. They have to believe in professional gaming. Your fans believe in you as a player. What do you want to say to everyone who's supporting you, everyone who watched your games, and everyone who is looking up to you as the greatest Hearthstone player in the world? I want to say that if you really want to be a world champion at video games or something, that it's like possible, that you can do it with like whatever's going on and stuff, and really just, even if you don't get invited to stuff and like the big pros like bully you because they think they're like better than you and make you reschedule games and stuff, like, just keep working at it and you can do it. Because, like, that's what it took me. A bunch of friends and stuff, we're all working together and just tons of hard work and made it. Congratulations once again, Firebat. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, give it up for the Hearthstone scientist, Firebat! <laughs> On 
on behalf of everyone here at the Tower of Ch uh, the Tavern of Champions, uh, thank you guys for being such a great crowd here at the Hearthstone stage. I'd like to say thank you on behalf of Blizzard, the production staff, my co-host Rachel, the casters, all of the great players, and of course you. We will see you soon in Goblins versus Gnomes, and we'll see you soon in Hearthstone. Don't forget, we've got Heroes of the Storm finals and StarCraft II finals still left today. Thank you for joining us at BlizzCon 2014, and we'll see you in Hearthstone.